Do you have leaky transmission lines that you are just dreading to replace? Mostly because they kind of snake up and over things and sometimes it's cumbersome, but it could actually be easier than you might think. So why are these lines the way they are, shaped in weird directions, basically? Well, from the factory, they attach these to either the frame or the engine transmission, so the drivetrain, depending on how they sit. And they have to clear all moving components, but they also have to be strong enough because a lot of times they're under pressure. You can see these are crimped here. That's because they're pressurized lines. So they can't just make it a rubber hose from one end to the other because that would be way too weak and it would fail very quickly. So why would these lines even start leaking? Obviously, the two ends where they have O-rings, those can be common failure points. The O-rings just stop sealing and they start leaking fluid. However, the rest of the line is most likely aluminum or some sort of steel so that it can withstand those things that I mentioned earlier, pressure, heat, elements, everything else. And they either corrode or in this case, if they're not completely corroded, but they're a little bit rusty, it looks like this engine has had a new oil pan put in. I can also see a new exhaust manifold on this side, both of which are common things on this particular engine. But I think what happened is as this engine was pushed up, because you have to do that, you have to raise the engine to do the manifold on this, the transmission lines run right next to the oil pan. So most likely they got pried out of the way a little bit. And that rust that was built up on the lines finally gave out and the line said, I'm done. And it started leaking. So these are the lines that we are replacing. You can see they, the transmission fluid went all the way back here. It's a pretty bad leak for us. So first I want to assess the situation, make sure that there isn't anything that is obviously 100% in my way and I need to remove it. In my case, I don't think there is. I think I have a few things that are potentially in the way. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I do the job. Right here, this sway bar, you can see it's pretty close here. I'm not too worried about it, but it is easy to remove if needed. Then I also have the front differential, this tube for the passenger side axle, which is pretty close also. However, one advantage that I have in this case is the end of the lines on the cooler side. So on the front, I'm taking the lines out backwards this way. Uh, the beginning of the lines are actually rubber. So what that means is I can bend it, twist it and turn it as I remove this to clear everything. Let's get these lines ready to come out. I like to start by removing any brackets that are holding these on so I can assess the situation further. I'm gonna take this bolt out for us. This is the only bracket. With this bolt out, you can see the lines are moving. So let's pull them off of both ends on the transmission and on the cooler, and then we'll see if they wanna come out. If not, we'll disassemble whatever needs to be disassembled. Follow the lines and pull them off of the transmission. In this case, they have a bracket. They're always clipped on differently depending on the manufacturer. So whatever you need to do to get those off, get them off on both ends. You want them loose so you can move them around and figure out which direction is best for them to come out of here. Watch out because at this point, when you pull them off of either ends, there will definitely be some fluid coming out. All right, those are off. Let's go to the front. Follow the lines to the other end. And well, here's the truth. Sometimes you do need a somewhat of a special tool to get these lines off. In our case, they have these weird looking lock pieces on them and uh, to disconnect these you need a tool that looks like this because they actually have a little snap ring in there the only way to get that loose is to stick this in expand it and then pull the line down off the cooler hopefully that's not the case for you and you don't need to get a special tool but sometimes it does happen so keep that in mind to get these off i'm just going to tap it off they get they get corroded over time and the uh well the lines do not the plastic locks but that makes it difficult for these to come off. There we go, get both of them off. All right, set those aside. And with a collection bucket underneath, let's get this tool slid right in here. It goes right around it. 
sometimes you have to push the line up a little bit just to get the tool in. See, this is the point where you're very tempted to just do some cutting, but uh, I guarantee you that's not what you want to do. And I'll explain in a little bit why. Oh, there we go. That's off. All right, so second one. Just be careful when you do this because you don't want to get this all over you, or worse, all over your face. So definitely wear some safety glasses when you do this. What you're aiming for is to just expand that little C-clip with this tool. This is, uh, this is basically what the line looks like inside. And you have, you have that ring, that black ring right at the top there. That's what you're fighting. There's the second one. Here's a tip. If you have rubber plugs laying around or really anything that'll cap this off, do that on both ends. I already did on the other end. I found these two plugs. I like to keep these around from radiators, AC condensers, anything else that I do, other lines. And now it's sealed up. It won't pour transmission fluid out as I try to fish it. Now, yes, you want to drain it as much as you can, but there's always going to be fluid in the lines. Capping it off ensures that you don't make a mess all over the place. I'm ready to pull these out, but what you're not going to see me do is cut them, bend them, or alter them in any way. And here's why. When I pull out lines like these, I try my best to keep them as intact as possible. Obviously, if these were rotted and they broke off, there's nothing I can do about that. Just pull them out and then figure out how to put the new ones in. However, the reason I don't alter their shape, I don't bend them, I don't cut them, is because removing these lines the exact way that they were intended to be shaped will tell me exactly how I can put the new ones in. And if these happen to get damaged, while removing them, that's not a big deal. But if I don't know exactly how to put the new ones in and I accidentally damage those, whether I bend them um, or maybe the rubber hose tears or whatever the case might be, or I get debris inside them, that's also why the new one is important to have caps on. Uh, but anyway, that damages my new part. I don't want that to happen. I wanna know exactly which way to put them in. And the only way to do that unless you already know, is to remove the old ones the exact way they were made. And I'm getting ready to pull these out, I promise. But one more thing, you can either take pictures of the whole setup so you can remember exactly how they're routed, or if you tie a piece of twine, some heavy duty string on the other side, you can basically route the string through everything the same way that this needs to be routed as it comes out. So it'll pull the string and then tie this into the new ones, pull them back through. Easy peasy. So let's try and pull on these and see which direction they want to go. Once again, I might have to remove some things, but I'm just going to experiment for now. Well, my suspicion was correct. The sway bar and the front differential are in the way. So no big deal. I'm just gonna drop these down and then these lines should just twist, turn and slide right out. All right, both of these items are down. Let's try and grab these and turn them whichever way necessary to get them out of here. There should be enough clearance now. Oh, we're making progress. Turn it sideways and just try to remember which direction you're turning things so that you can uh, basically do the same thing with the new lines. Okay. Yep, there we go. They're out and you can clearly see this entire area is just rotted. So here are the new transmission lines and this is why it's very important to take the old ones out 
without modifying them in any way because you need to be able to sneak these in, fish them in there without any damage. You don't want to bend these. Try not to scratch them up because they do have a coating on them, a uh, rust proofing coating so that they don't corrode. If you scratch it, try to cover it with something so that it doesn't rust very fast. And uh, this side actually comes with caps right here. You can see that's perfect. However, we also need to cap off this side because this is actually the end that we're gonna be fishing up and through. And I don't wanna get any debris in the lines. Sure, you can take a blow nozzle with compressed air and blow it out from the other end, but why do that when you can just have something that'll cap it off? If you don't have these little rubber caps like I do, you can just take some tape and literally just tape it up. It's as easy as that. You just need to cover the hole so that it doesn't get any debris inside. So I'm just gonna plug these up just like that. It doesn't have to be airtight. It doesn't have to be perfect. It'll just prevent debris, rust, and sand or whatever from getting in there. And uh, there we go. This is now ready to be installed. Take these new lines and sneak them in here. And uh, of course, this is when you would reference your, your pictures if you had any to make sure you're putting them in the right way, up and over what, where they belong and under things that they belong. You wanna make sure you have the same routing. They'll need to be twisted and turned a few times, but that's okay. All right, we made it through. Just like that. Make sure they follow the contour of, of everything. And now we can safely take these plugs off and plug them right back in. As you can see, I also put plugs over here so that fluid will stop leaking. So as soon as I pull these, I'm gonna actually have a collection bucket waiting to catch all the fluid that has most likely pulled up to the bottom of these. So make sure you are aware of that. So while that's draining, let's pull the plugs off the lines. And the fact that it's dripping actually helps us because it'll lubricate the O-rings inside of here. So, oh, that just clicked, easy. Oh, that one did not. Oh, there we go, that one clicked also. So these are locked in and good to go. The only thing we have to put on is the plastic safety locks, which your vehicle may or may not have. Locked in tight. Now let's put the lines in on the other side, remove these caps, slide these in. Now in our case, these are already lubricated from the factory underneath those caps. So they slid in perfectly. If yours are not, you just put some transmission fluid on them, on the O-rings that is, and uh, that should help them go in. Line up this bolt, which secures the bracket. And as soon as you thread it in by hand a little bit, you should be able to just tighten it up the rest of the way and make sure it's nice and snug so that this bracket can be held on tight and the, uh, the two lines won't pop out. That would be a well, pretty much a big disaster here if those pop out. All right, that's bottom out right there. Give it a little extra to reconnect them so that it can stay nice and secured out of the way of anything that is moving, spinning, shifting around as you're driving. For us, thankfully, it was only this one bracket, so I'm gonna get this bolt started. It's going into aluminum. Every time you have a bolt that's going into aluminum, well, anything really, but especially aluminum, start it by hand because cross-threading is very easy. The aluminum's soft and the bolt is not. All right, make sure that's nice and snug. So that's all set. Now let's put everything back together. Everything's back together, it's torqued to spec. It's important that you do that. And now I have to clean up the mess because there was a leak here and I don't wanna confuse residual fluid for a future leak. So I'm gonna take some brake parts cleaner, 
clean this all off, degrease it, and then let's go up and fill the transmission. The lines are replaced, the leak is fixed. I cleaned everything up, that way there's no potential residual that I'm gonna confuse for a future leak. At this point, you wanna to top off the transmission with the proper fluid. It's important that you use the manufacturer specified fluid because it has the correct additives in it to function with this particular transmission. So make sure you check your owner's manual if you're unsure of what the transmission takes. And then you wanna check the level because if it's too full or too low, it can cause issues or damage. So you wanna double check that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. And if you have any tips, tricks, or anything else to say, leave it in the comment section below. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching. Center stage, action. Follow the lines to the other end, and to the other end? Is that what I just said? <laughs> if you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section below. I <laughs> what? What was that? I just completely lost it. <laughs>